Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Classical High School for Interleague Boys Basketball. It, it seems funny to say Interleague Basketball because it's Classical against Swampscott. It used to be League Basketball, Northeast Conference. Cl classical now being in the Greater Boston League. Swampscott's still in the Northeastern Conference. For classical, one is Marvin Avery Jr. Two is Almani Medina. Five is Darren Gillian. Eleven is Thomas Walsh. Twenty-five is Devonte Taggart. Swampscott has a little bit of advantage with 35. Reed Benegor is jumping. He is huge in the middle. You almost give away the tap. He'll throw it up and we'll be underway. And Swampscott gets the basketball. Shot is shot. Tipped away. Classical will get it. He'll get an opportunity to get on the board first. Classical, two and one. Wants get the opposite, one and two. Shot up and good. Thomas Waltz. Haskell pressing. Another triple try off the rim, no good. Swampscott reached in to try and get the loose ball and it went out of bounds. Swampscott goes full court pressure. Haskell hands it pretty well. Haskell not a very big team. Three point shot off the rim. Devonte Taggart is the biggest guy on the floor, and he would certainly wouldn't be a center. He could be a guard, but he's the biggest guy on the floor for classical. But up and good. Max Brodsky gets Swampskin on the board. Again, classical handles the press. Marvin Avery Jr. is the leading scorer for Classical. Kicks it out for three. It's up and it's good. Almani Medina. Wild shot. Tag it for Chiarello to alter the shot. Off the rim and good. Marvin Avery Jr. Long three point bomb off the rim. And we're going to get a foul against Swampscott in the rebounding action. Eight to two, the Rams. As Henry. Butler will be in the game for Swampscott. Swampscott goes 1-2-2, two, two, full court press. They almost stole it away. Pascal didn't handle the press that well that time. They were lucky to get the ball back. Avery outside with the basketball. Long three-point shot off the rim, no good. Swampscott with the rebound, pushing it up. Long three-point bomb by the big guy. You usually don't see him that far away. He took the shot and they, and they sit him down.
Bumps kick goes one, two, two, full court. And then they switched it man to man. They almost threw it away. Schwamski picked it. Chiarello breaks a little bit of a drought. Eight to four, the Rams. The runner off the rim and out, but he get hit and he'll go to the line for two. So the big blue against the Rams in this interleague matchup. A little bit of crowd here for pre-Christmas. Darren Grudien on the board. Four of the five players for Classical have scored. Perfect with both. William goes out. Medina is back in. Classical going with pressure. Corrali, Cohen, Allison in the game for Classical. Off the rim, no good. Classical with the rebound. That was Darrell Reynolds who just came in the ball game. They give it off, they can't hit the shot. Avery has his rebound attempt blocked. A wild shot. Classical knocked it out, a wild layup by Chiarello. Swanson gets it back because Klausel knocked it out. Straight away, bangs, rolls, and goes for Jake Collins. And it's 10 to 6 to Rand. He was still in the backcourt. He went in the air, landed in the front court, but the last place he touched was the back court before he came down. So the turnover gives it back to the big blue. Long three-point bomb. Brodsky. And all of a sudden it's 10 to nine. Going to the basket, we got a foul against Swamp Scott. Reynolds at the line for Classical. They had a little bit of a lull, leading 10 to four, it's now 10 to nine. Five in a row by Swamp Scott. Reynolds makes the first. Makes them both. Haskell perfect the line, four for four. Almost stolen away, now it is stolen away, off the floor. Good job by Medina to come up with the loose ball. Avery's pass is tipped and knocked out by Swamp Scott. Traveled. Looked like he said, yeah, maybe I can take the three. He looked and said, I'm too far away. And he took a step before he dribbled the ball. Avery was just went out and was right back in. 12 to 9, the Rams. Bombs with a chance to cut into it. Long three point bomb. Off the rim, no good. Coming away with the rebound was Brodsky. Bombs gets it back. Shot, no good. Avery, out in front, lost it, gets it back. 
Strong to the basket, Reynolds. Inside to the big guy, turn around, hook, won't go. Coming up from behind with Pierce and the stealer, but he also banged in to Avery. So Swamp's getting a little bit of foul trouble. <laughs> we only have two fouls to waste, and we still have two minutes left in the first period. Classical hasn't committed a foul yet. Avery thought about it, didn't take it. Three point shot. Medina gets his second triple. First team foul, they try to steal the ball. Put that full court press, they got it, but they made contact getting it. Gabe Tripp will be in the game for the first time, but honestly, they go very small, taking out their big guy. He's not happy. Panaga came out of the game, he is really upset for coming out. Knock away. Medina got a piece, knocked it away from Chiarello. Swamsky cut the lead to three, they had the basketball. Now it's back up to eight. Tip, tack, the rebound goes to Reynolds. So classical in the middle of a five nothing run to get the lead back up to eight. They lost it, it gets tied up. It'll be Classical's basketball with the alternate possession. Maybe a little bit too much dribbling one-on-one. -on -one. Hmm, he almost picked that off. Behind the back. Off Classical. Swampskin <laughs> has been a little bit of a lull. They haven't scored in a while. The ball gets loose. Classical dives on it, and they were out of bounds. They had it, but they were out of, touching out of bounds when they grabbed it. Stolen away. Great job by Avery. Stepped in front of the pass, picked it, walked in, got hit, and he'll go to the line. For two. Makes the first. Obviously, Marvin Avery Jr. is Marvin Avery Sr., son, the coach. Jason Knowles is the head guy. That's what I'm Scott. That's a perfect in the line, six to six. And they have a 10 point lead. Steps called. He had the ball stuck between two white shirts, slipped and fell. Classical can take the last shot. The shot clock is off. Swamsky gets an opportunity. Throwing it up and in is Wales. 
Then ends a little bit of a drought, but Swamp Squat, they had 12 to 9. They had the basketball with a chance to get close to a tie it with a three. Classical scored seven straight points to make it 19 9. That last basket by Wales cuts it 19 to 11. Classical over Swamp Squat at the end of one period. Swampsky will have the basketball as we start the second period. Shot too, way too strong, goes out of bounds. <laughs> That full court pressure, Glassville handles it pretty well. Offensive foul against Glassville. Only their second foul. Again, with this whole period to go, Swampscott only has one foul to waste before Glassville shoots. And they've been perfect at the line, six for six. Long three-point bomb. Brodsky's got his second triple. They were lucky to get that back. Jump ball, it'll be Classical's basketball. Kiali Cohen Ellison in the game for Classical. Stolen away. They missed the layup, but Brodsky is there to put it away. Wide open layup missed. And Swamps gets back within three as they get five in a row. Swamps get picks off the pass. This is where we were in the first period. They were down three, they had the ball, with a chance to tie it. Benegauer gets his first basket, and it's a one-point game. Off the rim, no good. Blasco comes away with the rebound. Pass picked off. Swampska has a chance to get their first lead. Nine to nothing run. That was a three point basket. A ten nothing run. Swampscott has their first lead of the game, 21-19. We played two minutes plus a second. Classical hasn't scored yet. They got 19 in the first period. Classical had problems the last game. They played Revere, they had 17 points at halftime. They wound up with 22 points. They couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. They came out quickly here, put 19 on the board, had an eight point lead. And now all of a sudden, Swampscott in the middle of a 10-0 run. And Swampscott has their first lead. They had a tie at 2-2. Two two. Before Classical opened up the lead. And those lob passes are getting them in trouble. 
So running by Avery back at home. I don't think he called glass, but he'll take it. Now it goes out of bounds off Swamp Scott. We got our second tie. We were tied at two. Now we're tied at 21. Long three by Avery. Five in a row by Avery. Classical going man to man. Off the rim, no good. Classical got inside position. And it's Classical, the ball went down. They give it away. They missed the layup. The follow. Up and good by Reynolds. So now Classical scores seven in a row. That long point, five point bomb. Misses connections. Glasgow got lucky, they got stuck in the corner, but it went out off Swampscott. One second on the shot clock. All they could do was catch and shoot. Dante Rucker will put it in play. Shot clock violation, Swampscott will play the basketball. It missed everything. Halfway through and counting the second period. Another long three-point bomb. Shot, no good. Avery had it and he lost it out of bounds. Chiarello had the shot and missed everything and it went out. And they couldn't hold on, it went out of bounds. Inside, he got hit. Turned to take the shot, he got hit. He's got a huge advantage inside. And he doubled up on him and they hit him. They called it on Medina. So two at the line, no good. Missed them both. Knocked out by Schwarzkart. So Schwarzkart went on that 10 nothing run to start this second period to take their first lead and now they haven't scored since. Classical has scored seven in a row and they've had a little bit of a lull. Shot, shot clock, they ran the shot clock out again. Off classical. Brodsky with it. 
He's looking to get loose for a three. Stripped away by Classical, re-stripped by Butler. Long three-point bomb goes out of bounds. Kroski likes that three-point shot. They telegraphed that pass and Broski picked it off. Blocking foul against Glasgow won't be a shooting foul. They still have a couple of wastes. Way outside the Chiarello. Glasgow back in that 2-3 zone. Brodsky again with another three. That's his fourth trifecta. Three of them here in this period. Avery around the rim and out. Blocked inside. Nice rebound by Cohen Ellison and he get hit putting it up. That three by Brodsky ended a long drought by Schwampscott. They scored 10 in a row to get their first lead. That's their first basket. And it comes with just over, slightly over two minutes left. And that's the first free throw missed by Clasco. Makes that one. Glasgow goes back to man to man. Broski looking for some help to get a shot off. What? Didn't hit anything, but he got hit on the way and knocked down. Chirello will be at the line. For two. Once they gone has gone a long time without committing fouls. They, they had one foul to waste a while ago. And they're still not. They need one more to put classical at the line. They've gone long droughts without fouling. That one doesn't go. Taggart back in the game gets the rebound. Swampskit knocks it out. They almost gave it away to Broski. 27 25. <laughs> Dribbling through the pack. You can't dribble through that pressure. Broski shot, no good. Off the rim, no good. Tipped. Daggett comes away with it. Glasgow was lucky there after giving it away. Glasgow knocked it out. Marvin Avery very quickly, he subs left and right. Final minute of this first half, Classical by two. They've led off the rim, no good. Rebound inside by Classical, and they're gonna call a foul on Swampskit. That'll put Classical at the line for one on one. Dante Rucker got inside position, rebounded it, and they went over the top trying to take it away. So Rucker will get two, uh, one and one. He needs the first to get the second. Missed it, didn't hit anything. Well, Swampskit, again, can tie it with a bucket. They can take the lead with a three. Haskell in that full court pressure. 
Kroski. Inside to the big guy, too strong. Nice bounce pass, the shot won't go. Bumps get knocked it out. Uh, excuse me, Classical knocked it out. Great bounce pass, they missed the layup. Shot clock is off. If they choose, Swamps can take the last shot. Let's go back to man to man. They switch from man to man to zone. Spinning around, making the shot. The pick by Tripp, and he's going to get two at the line to try and break this 27 27 tie. Missed the first. Eight ticks on the clock. Missed it. Loose. Off the rim, no good. That'll do it. So we started dead even. We finished dead even. Classical had an eight-point lead at the end of the first period. Swamps get on a 10-0 run to start the period. They only got six points the rest of the period. Classical went on a 7-0 run to get the lead back. We wound up dead even our second tie. Our third tie, we were tied at two, we were tied at 21. Now we're tied at 27. So we'll start all over again when the second half starts. Dead even again, classical 27, Swamps got 27 at halftime. We're underway as we start second half. Swamps has the basketball with Davey at 27. And we got a foul. Trying to get position inside. First foul on Benegawa. So classical of a chance to get the lead back. We were tied at two, tied at 21. And now another takeaway by Schwampscott. Inside, and he traveled all over the place. Shuffled his feet, he was backing away trying to get the shot off. Looked like he was on ice skates. The official up court blew the whistle for some reason. They put 35 seconds back on the shot clock. And again, Klasko will get a chance to get on the board first. Well, I'm going in the zone. Off the rim, no good. Tip, Avery comes away with it. Slipped and fell and got hit. Great hustle by Avery. He missed the shot. He went and got it, fought for it, got it back. Took it strong to the basket, got hit, and he'll get two with the line. He had 10 in the first half to lead classical. And they hit their first six, and they've only made one since. Two quick fouls. We haven't played a minute, Swanson picked up two quick fouls. Avery doesn't get the bounce. They missed them both. But we're still tied at 27. Tough shot. Looked like he traveled. They didn't call it, but he missed the shot anyway. Strong move to the basket, looking for a three-point play. 
Medina with a strong move to the basket. He just said, get out of my way, here I come. So Collins has three, and now Butler has three. Those are fouls for Swamp Squad. They're in foul trouble. Swamp Squad misses, I mean, Susie Classical misses another free throw. 29-27, Classical. Three-point shot, no good. They come away with the rebound. Spinning, he turned to take the shot, and they went right over his back. Avery went down hard, he's getting up, he's okay. He went up to block the shot one way, and they took, they went, took it the other way. He went right over the back of Chiarello. It wasn't a shooting foul. Second foul on Avery. They threw the ball out of bounds. He tried to hand it. Swampskin wants the timeout. Benegal is not having a great night. He was upset when they took him out a couple of times. He's missed a couple of layups. Now he gets the ball in the corner. He turns to hand it. He throws it out of bounds. We've played almost two minutes. Classical has the only basket. So points have been hard to come by in this intercity battle, interleague battle. And it is intercity, Linda Swamp Squad. Jason Knowles, the coach of Swamps, get down in front of us, reading the riot act to his team, saying, let's go, let's get going. They've got a couple of their guys in foul trouble, and they've already committed three fouls, and we haven't played two minutes of the second half. Oscar leading by two when they have the basketball. They've led by as many as eight, They beat the press. Swanski drops back into a 2-3 zone. Tipped and stolen away, Brodsky. He had 16 in the first half. And we got another tie. Our fourth tie. Avery from long range goes out of bounds. Strong to the basket, missed the shot, got stripped away. Chiarello got it back. Frosky looking for his shot, couldn't, couldn't get it. Inside to the big guy, falling away. Hits nothing, it was out of bounds. They got what they wanted, the big height advantage inside, but he took the shot falling away and just went harmlessly out of bounds. Bob and Avery were screaming time out because they got caught. Marvin screaming at the official. They got stuck, he was screaming time out. I don't know how you can not hear Marvin Avery. They're gonna give the ball to Swamp Scott. He was calling time out because they got stuck and couldn't get the ball up court. And now they lose the basketball. 
And he's still screaming. They drop it inside for the big guy. Swamp has got their lead back. Only the second time they've led. Marvin Avery takes a timeout. He's still getting on the official. He's still screaming at the official for not giving him the timeout and turning the ball over to Swamp Scott. Swampskin had that 10 0 run to start the second period. They gave him the lead 21 19. This is their first lead again, 31 29. We played almost half of this third period, and we've had six points scored four by Swampskin, two by Classical. The offense has been as cold as the weather outside. Four fifteen left in this third period in this interleague battle. Both coaches reading the riot acts. Classical has the basketball, Swapskin has a two point lead. Medina are outside. They're having trouble with the Swampskid zone. Too strong with the shot. Chiarello with the rebound. They go inside, couldn't handle it. Nice job, they bang it off the big guy. They threw it inside again, and he couldn't handle the pass, he dropped it. And a great play, I think it was Medina, that banged it off the leg of Benagor. So Classical gets the ball back. But again, the zone by Schwamsky is causing a lot of problems. Classical hit a couple of threes in the first period. They're having trouble now just getting shots off. Strong drive, he missed everything, he went out of bounds. Almost lost it out of bounds. It got saved by Tripp. Shot, bounces, and goes for Wales. Bumpskin has the biggest lead of the game at four. Taggart almost got tied up. Steps called. Roscoe still with only one basket. We were tied at halftime. Swampsitz only got six points in five and a half minutes, and they're leading by four. Swampsitz lost it out of bounds. A little tricky dribbling, lost it. Swampsitz takes the press off. They're doing well as they are with. This 1-2-2 two, two zone. Avery with a tough shot. Classical saved it. He got saved by Rucka.
Avery has to get it up. Block inside. Shot clock violation. Classical's next appearance will be in the Boverini Tournament next week. Roski in and out. You should have a few of those. They had Taggart inside wide open and it made a different pass. Steps called. They turned the ball over again. The big guy throws it in for three. Swamps get by seven. Missed the shot. Final minute and counting. Inside to the big guy, he lost it. Goes to the floor, will tie it up. It'll be Classical's basketball. Almost run the shot clock out. Difference of about four seconds. They try to go against the big guy. He just they had to alter the shot. Foul against Clasco. Swanskit will look for the last shot. Tough shot. Oscar won't get a shot off. Oscar winds up with two points in the period. Those two points tied the game at 29. Swanskit finishes a 7 0 run to take the biggest lead of the game. We have a, eight minutes of period left. Swamps get leading classical 36 to 29 going into the fourth period. I think if you told Coach J Jason Noll you're going to be tied at halftime, you're going to come out in the third period and score nine points, he would have said, we're going to, we're going to have some work to do in, in the fourth period. By the same token, if you told Coach Marvin Avery, you're going to be tied 27 27 going into the fourth period and you got two points. You know you're going to be in trouble. And Swampskit has the basketball to start the fourth period. Swampskit went to that 1 2 2 zone, and Classical has not been able to hit anything outside, and they got nothing inside, and they just keep turning the ball over. Traveling, pa bad passing. For quite a while, they're not even getting shots. Blocked and knocked out of bounds. They go inside. Swamps is too big inside. They're not giving anything inside. Classical had four three point baskets in the first half. They've only got one basket in the third period. No good. Brodsky with the rebound. Off the rim, no good. Once good, knocked it out. A long drought by the classical Rams. 
that two-point basket gave them 29 early in the third period, and they haven't scored since. And now they turn it over. Clasco commits the foul. Marvin keeps shifting people in and out. And I have no idea who 34 is in the lineup because they don't have a 34 in their roster. Chiarello. They're up on top of Brossi. They go inside. He gets hit. Benegawa spun away, looking to go to the middle, and he got hit. He'll get two at the line. He's come alive. He's got 10 points. He was having a, a tough night. Makes them both. Came alive in the third period. He hit a three point basket. And Swampskit now leads by nine. Looks like a one-two two zone at times. It looks like a three-two, but the zone has really caused problems for Classical. And there's a steal. Roski behind the back. It got tipped inside. Good defense. And now they steal it away again. Roski stops for the three and nails it. His fifth trifecta. Glasgow called timeout just before Swanson could pick the pass. So the first five points means Swamps has scored the last 12 points. We played eight minutes in the third period, two minutes here in the fourth period. At Classical only has one basket. And that was very early in the third period. Classical threw that zone at them. And Classical has been turning the ball over. Not getting good shots, trying to go inside, getting it blocked, missing outside shots. Turning the ball over and traveling quite a bit. Losing it out of bounds. They get it up quickly, but they can't go to the basket because the big guy is there. Around the rim and out. Almost like the classical basket has a, a, a lid on it. Off the rim, no good. Avery with the rebound. Missed the shot. Wofsky comes away with the loose ball. Strong drive to the basket by Pearson.
They turn it over again. The big guy taking a three. I don't know if they wanted to do that. They just hold the ball outside. They can't get inside. And they're not hitting any outside shots. Avery strong to the basket. Slumpkin takes it away. Stopping, missing the shot. Did everything right. And now the reach in foul will be against Pearson. Chirrell did everything right. Went to the basket, stopped, fake, got everybody off their feet, and then he missed the layup. We're halfway through and counting. Can't hit the shot. Knocked out by Clasco. A 14 nothing run after that tie. They try to wrap around. He hit the bottom of the rim. The ball goes to the floor. It'll be classical basketball. put the shot clock at 32. They jump ball, I thought they would get a fresh 35, but I guess not. Ooh, they almost traveled. Stolen away. They read it nicely. Missed the shot, Brosky couldn't hit the shot. Off the rim, no good. Rebound by Swampskit, foul against Glasgow. Open up the closet door, whatever can fall out on Classical's head is falling on their head. They can't do anything offensively. Harvard Avery using everybody on his bench trying to find somebody that can get the offense going. Classical's waiting for another player. Excuse me, Classical's waiting for another player. This is almost like a replay of their last game against Revere Classical. Brodsky can't hit the shot. Avery had it. Brodsky picked it off. Another tough pass. Shot no good. Tag it with the rebound. Against Revere, they had 17 points in the first half. They got five in the second half. They did a lot better. Tonight they had 27 in the first half, but they've got two in the second half, and we have two and a half left in the game. The zone that Swampsky has put up, one, two, two, has mesmerized classical. They just can't get a good shot. They can't hit anything. They turn the ball over. They can't get anything inside with the height by Swamp Scott. Avery shot, no good. The ball goes to the floor. Swampskit takes it away. Every loose ball Swampskit's getting. Shot, hit the rim. Shot, no good. Blocked inside, they're gonna get a foul. Or just Benegawa. Hey. 
just under two minutes left. Darrell Reynolds with two. Makes the first. That's the first point since early in the third period and only the third point of the half. Makes them both. They almost threw it away. Broski saved it. Shot no good. Chiarello missed the shot. He kept it alive. Conniga tipped it to himself as he was looking to go up with it. He got hit. He'll get two at the line. Both teams will be shooting one on one with 145 left in the game. Makes the first. Swampskit could wind up with less than 50 points and win the game by double digits. They're up by 13 now. Missed it. Swampskit was going to call a timeout, but they missed the shot. Straight from behind. Great hustle by Chiarello. Big guy missed the shot. The ball's on the floor. It'll be Swampskis basketball. Off the rim, no good. Up and good, I don't know who it is. He's not on the roster they gave us. Off the rim, the big guy again, taking a three. They don't want him to take that shot. He looked at the coach and said, what do you want? I was open, they don't want him to take that shot. They want him inside. They, they kicked him off the bench. Coach Knoll's going crazy. Go, go sit over there. Shot is missed. Broski with the rebound. Glasgow can't buy points. Broski with another three. Six trifectas for Broski. Almost stolen away. We're winding down now. Shot block. But they're going to send Rucker to the line for two. Wow, he threw it off the roof and it banked in. No good. Glasgow will just hold it and run the clock out. And it's going to be a repeat performance by Glasgow. They had a big first half. They had a decent first half against Revere, scored five in the second half. They had a good first half here against Revere, tied at 27. They come out, they get two baskets and three free throws. Seven points they got in the second half.
five points in the third period, one basket in the third in the third period, five points in the fourth period, seven total in the second half, and they wind up on the short end, 47 to 34. It was 29-29, the fourth time we had the tie we had. Swampskit went, ran seven nothing to end the third period, up seven. They ran seven more to build up a 14-point lead, and they just coasted from there as the zone defense that Swampskit put up, Glasgow couldn't handle it. They couldn't do any scoring at all. They couldn't get any points, and they wound up, they'll even their record going into the Bovary tournament at two and two. Swampskit will even their record at two and two. For Swampskit, Brodsky had six three-point baskets for 24 points. For, Sw for Glasgow, I can't tell you who number 34 is because he was not on the roster. He got a basket. Rucker got a point. Walsh got two. Reynolds had eight. Six of those in the first half. Julian had two. Ellison had two. Medina had eight. Six of those in the first half. Avery had 10. All 10 in the first half. As Glasgow just couldn't get anything done offensively against that. 1-2-2 two, two zone that Swampskit put up. So Glasgow will go to 2-2. Two and two. Swampskit will go to 2-2 two and two also. For Glasgow, it's two losses in a row to go 2-2. Two 47-34, two. one of the lowest scoring games we've had in a long time. Swampskit over Glasgow, 47-34. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm John Hoffman saying we'll see you next time. Since 1986, Lynn Educational Television has enabled students to work in the television industry and learn how to produce media. LETV creates working opportunities for Lynn students, giving them the benefit of gaining real-life work experience in production. Lynn Educational Television brings value to Lynn students, delivering standards-based curriculum in the classroom from middle school to high school. LETV creates future generations of media professionals.